Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yeah, welcome to Drinking Bros, where we hey n- no laws over here, Bert Koontz. No laws. Boom, boom. A couple of six shooters to get the day started here. We got White Claws on this side. Um, you are, you're setting up your podcast studio in, in Wyoming, aren't you? We are. We actually just started. It's underneath the coffee shop in the same building right on Main Street. And we, the guys are actually down there right now laying the hardwood floor in. And they're starting to do the walls, which is going to be all wood. It's kind of going to look like the coffee shop, mm-hmm. like an 1800s general store vibe. Going to have a buffalo head in there, of course. Of course. So shoulder mount. But it'll be, it'll be awesome. It's going to be very Wyoming. I just thought and- of uh, a shoulder mounted buffalo. Like you're walking around town with one just on your shoulder, like a fucking like a, a rocket, like a rocket, like or a parrot. Yeah, you said shoulder no. mounted. It made me think of like a law or a fucking Carl Gustav or some shit. Give me about I'd say 14 months, and I will have on my flatbed 1975 Ford F260. And I know some fucking dipshit out there is gonna say, "God damn, Ford never made no F260." They did for a couple years. It's a full time four wheel drive. It's a flatbed 1975 F260 for you gearheads. I'm going to have a buffalo on the back of that thing and drive around town with it every day. Oh, like a full-size, full-grown buffalo. Are you, just, wor- are you worried at all it. about transients uh, having sex with the buffalo's face? <laughs> you know, I actually didn't sleep last night because I was worried about that. <laughs> God, you're such a piece of shit. Uh, every time I tell a cool story, you just ruin it with some creepy Ruin it, dude, with just high shit. talk. Every time. It just, it just gets yeah. high. And it's That's not high, high talk. talk. Look, if you put an orifice out in public somewhere, it's going to get fucked by somebody. True. Wow. True. Right? Am I right? That's why they fucking fill those cannons up with uh, lead or whatever the fuck. It's not so yeah, they don't shoot. They're worried about people having sex with them. It's hard to mount a buffalo, though, or stick a dick inside a buffalo mouth. No, like a nostril, die. probably. I, I'm pretty sure that's never happened anywhere. It's not like goats in the Middle East. Like it's it No, is... dude, the buffalo is going to be dead. You're not just going to be driving around with a live buffalo in your truck, are yeah, you? Yeah, is it live? No, I, it's, no it's live. 100% yeah. Oh, okay. Like you got real... me there. Yeah. You're not, don't, do live. not try to have sex with a live buffalo, folks. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> don't do it. Do I'm telling you, don't do it. Why did you don't think he was going to drive around with a dead buffalo in his truck? Like a, Yeah. That's like weird. A buffalo head. Why would you drive around with a goddamn live buffalo? It makes more sense. Why to have wouldn't a you? Because it's, it's yeah. fucking America, man. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like why? The buffalo Every wants idiot to see the world. With a little tiny dog hanging out their window. If I drive around with a buffalo, like it doesn't get more American than that. A Ford F two sixty flatbed. Goddamn buffalo right. on the back. Fucking Kid Rock bla- blaring out of the fucking doors. Bob to the Bob to bang to bang dang it dang it ding get it biggity pop. And I then, don't know how it goes, but I think that's pretty much close, right? Yeah, yeah and close, the buffalo's yeah. name could be Kid. And, you know, my name is Kid! And then it's fucking... Well, let's not take it that far. Doom, 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 doom. And then you could... The buffalo fucking tears off in the middle of the street. I think that's part of the Fridays. The buffalo jumps out of the truck, tears out in the street, and then boom. Yeah, that's a really good buffalo idea. Drive around with, a, with yeah. a, a Drive around with a live, angry buffalo in the back of your fucking flatbed. But here's the thing. Because oh, it's going to jump off and attack everybody. Bird's got to wrestle it down and front of the people dude and it's like oh shit there's buffalo bert you're not wrestling a live buffalo which has not happened there's one guy <laughs> that is and if you aren't following him on instagram you should his name is Derek begay and it's like big com pretty common last name b-e-g-a-y is first name Derek. he actually will ride he's a big rodeo guy like really good rodeo guy great american <laughs> Great Native American. His name is Derek Begay. I don't work with him. I don't make money by plugging him. But if you're not following him on Instagram, the guy will actually get on and ride Buffalo like cowboys ride Bronx. No like shit. It's, it's insane. Fuck that. Yeah. I yeah, mean, he's just covered him a few up, times. A bunch that. of other big companies have covered him. But he's Mm-mm. Derek Begay. You should check it out sometime. It's awesome. I will. By the way, Dan, I finally got into Yellowstone last night. I had to fucking buy it off of iTunes. Um, and there was a ton of live Buffalo in that. Have you seen that show yet with Kevin Costner? Yeah, I've watched every season. I'm I'm a huge fan of it. Mm-hmm. It's a little over the top, and I would love to shoot the the daughter in the head. Like she's she's, she's just worst. too much for me <laughs> with her drinking worst. and her bullshit. <laughs> like, it, sh- but the uh, the actual show itself is is awesome. Like it's classic Kevin. Co- I'm a Kevin Costner. Ross, you and I have had this conversation. Oh like, yeah. I even like Waterworld. Like I'll watch yeah. that once or twice a year. Postman. I don't think Kevin Costner's made a bad movie. He just hasn't. I, I'm a Kevin Costner fan. I like all his stuff. 
Oh, that so, Dan's, Dan's going to pull up his IMDb here. Um, I'm, I'm with you. I, I like Kacos. Here's the weird thing, Bert. I'm so with you on this that like, I'm even willing to overlook that he forgot to have a British accent halfway through Robin Hood and just went back to being Kevin. It's Costner. just, it's great. And it's great. You just, <laughs> it's great. It's like they took a break or something from <clears throat> filming, came back and he just was like, eh, I'm not doing it, man. You know, the shittiest thing about it is we were supposed to have him on the show in August for the field of dreams. Uh, we, were, we were going to the field of dreams in Iowa. Yeah. That might not even happen yeah. now. Uh, no, it, I don't think it is. So, uh, <laughs> Jesse, my wife, um, her brother is married into the Dwyer Brown family who played his dad in field of dreams. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So, you know, we were going to interview Dwyer and then in Kacos and, uh, I don't know that's going to happen because of the, the Chinese <laughs> virus, but, uh, it sucks, man, because I, I want to have that guy on the show. I feel like he's got endless fucking stories, Kevin Costner. Well, he, man, he's, I guarantee he does. Like that guy is, I can't remember the movie that I just watched to his, but it's kind of a low budget. It's not low budget. It's Kevin Costner, but it's kind of a B movie that he plays a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And it's the oh, first Mr. time Brooks? I think he just, just gets to be weird. Mr. Since Brooks, that movie, the one where he's a serial, the one where he's a serial killer, Mr. Brooks. No, that's a great movie though. Somehow I caught that in Romania at like three o'clock in the morning when I was working over there for a few months. It is a really good movie. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, another one. By the way, we've already named two movies that his, his penis has been cut out of. Mm -hmm. uh, every person mm -hmm. who comes on the show when we talk about Kevin Costner, I always say the same thing. His dream is to have his dick in a movie, and it's been cut out of eight films. Um, Robin, Are you serious? Yep. Robin Hood is one of them. Um, and so is he, is, is he rocking a hammer or something? What's the deal? He's got a hog. Yeah. And uh, Robin Hood is one of them. And Mr. Brooks is one of them. So Robin Hood, do you remember the shot where he's buck naked swimming <laughs> through the, the waterfalls? Yes. And you see his ass. Well, apparently he flips over and had the dong in the water and everything. And they cut it there because mm. it needed to be PG 13. Yeah. He swam on his back for 30 straight seconds. And it's just his <laughs> dick flopping out of the water the whole time. And they didn't show it. They had to cut it they because of, it. they had to cut it because a large mouth bass came after it. And it was a whole fucking situation. Yeah. It was a real big sit. Wow. Um, and the other one of Mr. Brooks, uh, <laughs> and this is to test your three o'clock <clears throat> in the morning, Romanian knowledge is He's bent over by the fireplace, like burning all of his clothes, and he's buck naked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he goes and looks out a window or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Super scene, yeah. weird. And it was just like, why? Because mm. when you watch it, you're like, why is that scene in the movie? It's because he wanted to show why his dick. That? So yeah. they cut it out of that as well. But uh, well, that's an awesome fireplace, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a great nice, fireplace. Nice butt too. So yeah, great all, ass all around. No, here, he's got an average here, white man ass. Yeah. Here's here's some of his movies: The Untouchables, bullshit. Uh, Love that It's movie. a great movie. It's a great movie, Dan. Bull, Bull Durham. Bullshit. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, Bull great Durham movie, was on man. two nights ago. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Duke uh, Nuke, dude. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Field of Dreams. Amazing. Dances great with movie. Wolves. Oscar, Amazing. JFK. What? Top was... five. Top fiver. Dances yeah. with Wolves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Bodyguard. Oof. Wyatt Earp good movie. was long as fuck. Man. Yeah, he Wyatt liked... Earp. They got fucked because Tombstone came out right before it and just... Yeah, nuked that movie altogether. <clears throat> the Postman. That's a weird movie, but I enjoyed it. I like the Postman. You a Postman fan, Bert? I, I would. I wouldn't have turned it off. Like it's not my favorite movie of his. It's not like Open Range or Wyatt Earp or or Dancing with Wolves or Field of Dreams. But it was an entertaining. Yeah, it's better I, than a lot I, of the shit you. that comes out today. That's for sure. I'm with you on that. For the love of the game, I thought could have been better. Ah, uh, but I enjoyed it. But it was all right. It was, it was, it was good enough. Right. Uh, mm. Three Thousand Miles to Graceland is a really good movie. Yeah. That's a great movie. So there's a scene with him in that movie where some who was his co star in that movie? Uh Kurt Russell. Kurt right. Russell's yeah. talking to a woman and uh and the, the woman woman's got her is, back to Kevin it? Costner and Kevin Costner starts doing this just out of the blue. Totally <laughs> random. But like that is the real Kevin Costner. It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I'll have to try and find the scene and send it to you. But it's totally random and you can tell when they were filming this thing that he just 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 did it like it's probably he does this right behind it's just hilarious yeah it's, it's, a, it's a scene where they first meet courtney cox and they're outside of her like trailer park or whatever yeah yes yeah. yes yeah yeah i'm a, look, it's a good movie we're k-cost fans here tin cup dude is one of my faves the guardian great movie is a good movie yeah oh the <laughs> guardians with ashton kutcher yeah. that's where i wrote so i wrote that <clears> rap <throat> song after seeing that movie i wrote a rap song that went viral called uh, uh costner wild turkey and vicodin and it was just a guy who's <laughs> my, my three favorite things in the world were Kevin Costner, Wild Turkey, and Vicodin. And he saw it. And his daughter actually reached out to me um, 
through you know via our agents and all that shit. And I was like, <clears throat> fucking A. He's got a good sense of humor. But in that movie, The Guardian, he gets up out of bed and it's like he's a coast guard in the movie. Um, not that that's not a, an important job he's because a, it is. They're, they're rescue swimmers, right? But they're, they're like. And he, by the way, the Coast Guard has the hardest basic training of all the military branches. It, that's what oh I've heard. God. That's what I've heard. Get the fuck out of here. But it's true. <laughs> Our he, basic, your basic training and my basic training was a fucking joke. It was a waste of time, was it not? Dude, I went to basic training. I went to infantry basic training of, in, at Fort Benning. Yeah, same. There's not a harder basic training in the entire oh, world. Oh, come on. It was not that hard. I know. Mine was actually not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> but in the Guardian, as a Coast Guard, like the days were too hard for him in the morning. So the only way he could leave his bed was by by taking Vicodin and drinking wild turkey just to start his day. And I was like, fuck, I'm on that. How hard is the Coast Guard? Um, You know, I don't know, but he's done a lot of good stuff. I mean, he's a guy that's his career is legit spanned about 35, 40 years. Like he's been in good. He's he was in good movies. And then I don't know about the 80s so much, but the 90s for sure. And now in 2020, 80s, he um, killed Bull Durham, Field of Dreams. All that shit was those are all 90s. No. Yeah. So be, circling back, oh, what do yeah, you think right. of Yellowstone? Yellowstone is the best. Honestly, I think it might be the best dramatic television series that I've ever seen. We'll see how it develops over yeah, the it's, next it's good. two to it's four really, seasons. Really good. But I am so I'm in the I'm in <laughs> mid first season right now, and I'm Jesse and I are through the end of our queue. So um, we had to circle back to shit, you know, apps we don't have. Like I don't have the Paramount app, um, so we had to buy it through iTunes. It's really fucking good. Um, the one thing that Hollywood gets wrong all the time now in particular, um, and we're going to talk about this in a second with you, is after the election with the, the PC bullshit, you know, of like, oh, man, we don't want to offend anyone. Them yeah. having to cast real Indians in that show, they're the worst actors in the world um, because they're they. It's really hard to find genuine Native Americans who also are. You know, prestigious actors. Yeah, there's, yeah there's, usually you just find Mexican people who yeah, look kind of There's really, really good, out, good ones out there, but it, you're correct. And a lot of times when you start watching these Westerns, you start watching these movies, most of them, a lot of them aren't even Native American. They're Hispanic mm-hmm. or... Right. And so there's a know, lot they, of cutaways yeah. in Yellowstone that they're trying to get <laughs> away from the actor's dialogue. Whenever you see their lines, not on camera, and it's like behind their head, you can tell they were like, ooh, that was a rough one for you. Gil Birmingham plays... In any any movie or TV show that needs a native, an older Native American guy that knows mm-hmm. what's up, he plays that guy yeah, every yeah. single fucking time. <laughs> he was he he He's played the Danny Trejo of Native American. He played the guy that ran the Wamapo Casino in Parks and Recreation. Yeah. He's the fucking head. Uh, he runs the casino <laughs> yep. in this one. Anytime yep. there's a Native American casino that exists in that fucking in the film and TV universe, this motherfucker plays. It. Yeah. And I that's love he's the only one. Wamapo Casino from Parks and Rec. How how many times do you watch Parks and Rec from start uh, to finish, Dan? Probably uh, I don't know, fifteen maybe. I don't know. Be uh, honest such a did great you watch show. The, the the new one last night? No, I've not seen it. Yet. Okay, so they did a fundraiser where they got everybody together and shot it at their ha- their houses, um, kind of like a where are they now type of deal, um, and it raised so far two point eight million dollars for charity, which is awesome, and uh, people <laughs> loved it. Um, I, that's a show that I would be. Surprised if it doesn't come back eventually. Maybe. I don't it's know. a great I mean, show. I don't, Matt in the office, yeah. good shows. Uh, I know. They, they cannot get Michael Scott to come back. He will not come back to it. Why Steve Carell. <coughs> you know. He, he didn't even stick around for the last two seasons. No. What, but what else is he doing? Like, they're not making comedy movies anymore. Uh, probably trying to spend a billion dollars. I guess. But it's like, man, give the people what they want. You know? I mean, even, I guess, even... Uh, uh, Seinfeld came back and did something. Yeah, I don't Fr- know. Friends is coming well, back. This, they're, like, they're getting together. Seinfeld, like they all re- reunited on Curb Your Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, like, more or less. There's three or four episodes where they're all together, which is a great, <laughs> another good show. Great show, yeah. Yeah, he's been doing. I've watched a lot of TV shit. lately, but when I do, that's what I end up watching. I end go. It's I, I have a, my Parks and Rec, The Office, and mm-hmm. Curb Your Enthusiasm. I watch all three of those probably start to finish once a year when I'm just in that mood. Yeah. And the office is one of the highest syndicated shows that and friends, uh, that friends and Seinfeld are top three. And yeah. there's a reason <clears throat> you can just leave them on. And every episode is pretty much goddamn great. So yeah, uh, he's it's always been, on in the background. He's been mostly doing either cartoons or dramatic shit. 
No, yeah. no live comedy. No. But maybe that's just him being smart and realizing that there is no live comedy. Oh, he's anymore. getting a monster residual check every minute. He's probably watching uh, his phone. He's just going ding, 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 ding. Yeah. He's just getting paid for, for syndication around the world. Oh, it, it's it's endless. And I think they just signed a $100 million deal um, with a new network that the office is going to run on. And, uh, dude, he'll be making money forever I mean, on he was, that. He was making about a hundred and he i think he actually started out and or not and one but in two he started making about 150k an episode yeah yeah he's fine have you ever watched the uh their interview or their uh rehearsal mm. audition tapes oh yeah yeah we're like the audition uh, tapes yeah, of them bob, actually auditioning for the office it's pretty funny well they yeah. made all of them public like bob odenkirk auditioned for that mm-hmm. position yeah and a bunch of other people as well um god who auditioned seth rogan auditioned for dwight Schrute. yep that would have been weird uh, yes, yes, it would have. I mean, but Rain, that, Rain that, Wilson is the best Dwight Schrute. There's no, obviously, we we have the the benefit of uh, it already yeah. having happened, and we can see that it worked. But man, I can't imagine anybody else playing that character. No, that th- Dwight Schrute and Ron Swanson, mm-hmm. that they're the anchors of both those shows. Like, yeah, there's a lot of other people on it, but for me. Those two guys, like, I don't laugh a lot, and I will watch that and cry. Like, both those guys, man. It's hilarious. Those two guys are fucking great. Yeah, the casting director is uh, Allison Jones, and she's really, really great. She's able to find a ton of comedians mm-hmm. uh, and plug plug them in. Uh, Dwight Schrute was coming off of Six Feet Under, um, which he was fucking awesome in that. And it was just like, all right, cool, man. He was coming off a hit HBO show. Um, where is uh, Ron Swanson? Wasn't coming off of anything. I mean, he was a character. He struggled he, forever and yeah. was running a furniture store in L.A. <clears throat> um, very similar to, to your background there, Bert. He would make like woodwork and shit where it was beautiful furniture. But he was just like, dude, I'm over this. I'm sick of trying to make it. His wife is already worth a gajillion dollars anyways. Uh, and then Parks and Rec happened and he was fucking amazing. But yeah, he struggled for a long time. That's great. He's awesome. Yeah, he's one of the best. Um, want to chat with you about uh, Joe Biden today? Uh, did you did you happen to take a peek, sees at uh, his little interview with uh, with Mika this morning? I did, and I keep looking that way. So I'm actually in the coffee shop, and we're open for the first time in three months. So oh, we're just open to, to walk in traffic. We kind of a soft opening, <clears throat> you know, so people are coming in and out. But I did watch his interview this morning, and not a bigger piece of shit on the entire planet. Like this guy, <laughs> it's hard. Well, maybe Dan Howard, yeah, I'm, but I'm yeah, right there yeah. with him. The, uh, at least, at least number it's two. hard to, it's hard to watch. And I, you know, I'm on social media a lot because of what I do mm-hmm. in our companies. So I, I, you can't, you can't filter out the negative crap, but the hardest part for me to watch is to watch Democrats and liberals support this guy. Like it is, so painful because their argument is now well even if it is true donald trump has 12 accusations against him he's only got one it's like man you guys you guys are trying to support an elitist old broken demented creepy predator sexual harasser as your presidential candidate like you're you've just spent four years bashing Donald Trump for being just that. Mm-hmm. And now he's because, I mean, it just, it just baffles me that that is the democratic party's number one guy. And this guy is no doubt about it. After watching his interview, you already knew it is slimy. Anybody that spends their whole life in politics is a fucking <laughs> shitbag loser. Anyway, it just, <laughs> they, they're literally a leech on the American society. Like if you're a career politician, you are a piece of shit period. Hands down, go get a real fucking job. Like do something else. But this guy, after watching his interview this morning, might be the biggest piece of shit ever to run for president. Hands down, period. Well, I don't know. I mean, like the first 15 or so own slaves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, historically and, you know, by time period, that was a whole Mm -hmm. nother period in the United States. You know, it was I'm not justifying it by any means. No, it's fine. But whatever. But when you just look at actual person like this guy is a fucking turd and the amount of celebrities and the amount of other Obama, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, all these people that are endorsing this guy. It's like, man, are you fucking kidding me? 
like this guy is a piece of shit. Yeah. And he's got dementia, by the way. Yeah. So you throw all this stuff together and this is the greatest hope for the Democratic Party. You got to be fucking kidding me. Well, like l- it's luckily for him, once it uh, goes to trial, he won't remember anything that happened anyways. No. And he's already you saw. Did you watch him this morning? No, he was I, already I haven't of, seen like, that interview. He, he, you haven't watched it, Dan? No. <clears throat> oh, you got to. It's just tell, tell like, me it, for the again, audience that haven't seen it yet. Tell me what happened. Oh, boy. Well, with... it was just MSNBC and they literally teed him up to, you know, they obviously discussed it beforehand. What his mm-hmm. answer was going to be, what the question was going to be. The one thing I will say that the anchor on MSNBC said, hey, this is going to be graphic. And sh- it's like this baffles me. But literally, this is the day and age we live in that sh- her exact wording was this is going to be graphic, but Mr. Vice President, and in the same sentence as Mr. Vice President, it is alleged that you pulled her dress up and you put her your fingers inside her. And I'm just going, man, where, what, in the, what planet do we live on right now mm. that that is <clears throat> that's the guy that's running for, pre- for I, president? If I if I was Mika, how, however you say her last name, I would have been like, I would have read the quote. And it says you put your fingers inside. I'm like, now, Mr. Vice President, I think what everyone wants to know, was it the butt or the vagina? <laughs> right. Uh, which it, it was the vagina. Which by the hole? Way. Yeah. And it was it the, says vagina. the vagina. Okay, it does that, say the vagina. Then. That's that takes a lot of uh, honestly. That I I was feeling pretty stressed out about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can tell because uh, he goes around shaking hands all day. A lot. So you don't want to be spreading. Ebola. I mean, that's butt. That's butt no, juice. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Ebola, whatever butt the fuck. Hands down. Butt juice. Yeah. yeah. Butt juice. Yeah. yeah. You don't. Yeah. Don't uh, the, the weird thing is, though, I will say this. <laughs> you know, he picked a he picked a left network, obviously, um, and she did go all in and tried to at, you know hammer him with questions. The fucking stuttering in the the weird silence for thirty seconds. It, it's you know, it's one of those things no. where I don't know if it was the Zoom or the connection or if he just genuinely didn't want to answer the question, but he's fucked. I think he didn't want to answer it. And, and he's done. Like, again, I, I, I there's gotta be somebody better out there than both these guys. Like I will vote for Trump. Like I said, on the last time I was on here, cause I, he, <clears throat> he lines up with a lot of the stuff that I believe in for America. He's still a shit bag and he's an elitist and he had everything handed to him in life and he is what it is, but I will vote for him because he's the lesser of two evils. And I think he's better for the economy and the country and the military, but there's no way Biden is done. Like he's done. Cause now all these actresses and celebrities and everybody that, that are staying quiet, but they were hammering Kavanaugh Fox news and all the other, you know, TMZ even is getting on board. They're starting to nail these people going, Hey, you got a huge double standard. Yep. They're all going to turn on Biden at some point. Cause they're have to, cause they're going to go shit. I'm not going to get another movie gig. I'm not going to get another music gig. If if I if I don't do the right thing here, but I think he's done, which is good. This guy, like, put a fork in him, man, like, go eat strained carrots somewhere at a, at a home in Florida. Like, you're done. Like, this guy's too old to be president to begin with. There's more backstory to this whole situation uh, with regard to it being on MSNBC. Now, Chris Hayes from MSNBC, some of you may know, has been covering this lately. Yes. And not in a way that was necessarily favorable to Trump. No, and, and fire Chris Hayes was the hashtag and last And he night. got fired, right? Are you serious? Didn't he get fired? I, I, thought don't, he got I fired. don't know. I, I thought I know he resigned that they were, some shit. They were asking for it, calling for his, his resignation, but uh, I don't know that he did that simply because... He was asking the same questions, and he, he was honest about his look. Look, I'm asking the same <laughs> questions that were asked about Kavanaugh. And I had said this uh, you know, previously this morning. I said, look, the, the dangerous precedent of what they did to Kavanaugh is going to carry over to every politician now or anybody in public office forever. Just wait till the next one. And here we are with the next one. It's <laughs> Joe Biden, and now he's, he's getting hammered with this shit as well. Um, You know, and you can say whatever you want, but it's old allegations that are being dug up, same as Kavanaugh was. I don't know whether this girl's telling the truth or not. I have no fucking idea. I wasn't there. No. And uh, well, it's it's just odd, like her mom going on CNN, and exactly the one thing when somebody who's super uber liberal that supports the Democratic Party that was her neighbor starts the sentence with "I'm voting for Joe Biden." I'm a Democrat. I support Joe Biden. I think he's a good political, you know, he's a, he's a good politician. But 
I 100% believe her on this. And she did tell me about this when it <laughs> happened. And I have to, as a woman, you know, again, is this lady just another coop trying to get on TV? Maybe. But it seems pretty genuine when somebody starts out by saying, hey, I'm a Democrat for life and I'm voting for this guy. But I have to say that this probably did happen. And somebody told me about it when it did. And then the, the other one is the Larry King thing, yep. which is super weird to me because I watched it on Google Play. Yeah. Right when they, you know, I was at home sanding a table down and stopped for a minute. And I got on Google Play when it, because I just checked the news three or four times a day. And then I went back to check it because I, I think I was talking to Tyler Gray. I think I was talking to somebody. I went back to check it. It was gone. And you can't find it anywhere now. Like I, you just, it disappeared. Yeah. You got to go to Twitter and try to find, you know, people have, you know, sucked that video into their own feed. Yeah. But uh, yeah. essentially her mom called into Larry King live on air in 1993 and said, my daughter uh, was abused by a prominent politician and I don't know where to go. And, you know, we don't know who to call and all this other stuff. Um, and they have the audio. And then she confirmed that it was her mother that was calling in. Um, that's the only hard yeah, one. And her mom and her mom's dead, which again, yes. it's not like her mom is alive now trying to get publicity. Her mom is she dead. died like 10 years like ago. It's, you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's not like her mom's trying to make money off this or they're trying to profit off it. Her mom's dead. Yeah. She's gone. Um, and I'm, I'm curious in your new show, uh, in your new podcast, are you going to be covering things like this all the time? Cause you're a big news I, guy like myself. I'm a huge news junkie and <laughs> I, I am. I think one of the things without giving too much away, because you know the dealers vultures out there and people copy all your shit now. You guys are the perfect example of that. You and, and the BRCC guys, people just copy your shit. But <coughs> with the show, what 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 this show is gonna be about, and I'm you know, I posted by myself yesterday and people, you know, the reaction's been really good. But mm -hmm. Buster Frierson is also a business partner of mine and Tyler Gray who is also a business. Those are my two best friends. And those guys are going to be hosts on the show with me. That's great. And then we've got some other folks and you guys already know this, but for those that are watching this, because the DB community is, you know, is always supported everything we've done. Um, again, I say it every time I come on here, but what a great fucking community, man. Like, yeah, is there a little bit of drama every now and then, but man, what a great group of folks, but I want the show to be real. And I don't, like I said it in my post, I I don't want people to talk about how great they are now. I want them to talk about how great they weren't when they were fucking doing a $10 an hour a day job, dreaming about where they're at today. That to me is more important. You know, and Tyler and I were talking about it this morning and Tyler was like, Oh man, I got a story. That's like, I was so embarrassed about forever, but he shit his pants at camp. And like, it was a bad shit your pants, but <laughs> That's, Just describe that's how bad it was. It was more well, I'm gonna liquid let, I'm gonna than let him solid. Tell it at imagine. some point, but, but <laughs> if he, if you dump but, out in your pants and it's a solid piece, you could just flip it out right yeah, quick. You pop that out, kind of yeah. like how. Uh, during the Great Escape, Homeboy was letting dirt out of the bottom of his pant leg. Yeah, the whole time, yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. a Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or like a Shawshank hockey sack at a fish yeah. concert. Yeah, yeah. just like you just shake that turret out of the bottom of your fucking jean pants. Sure. Yeah. And then move on about your life. A, hack, a hacky sack. Yeah, we did. At a fish show, yeah, yeah you can just uh, yeah, get, and give that a heel kick and get out of there. Punt, you know? it, punt it into the oh. bushes, but if it's if it's all liquid, yeah. then you've got. Some yeah, problems. we've got. You know, we've got <laughs> like that. That's obviously way out there. Like, I'm not going to have everybody on, or we're not going to have everybody on, and 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 say, hey, tell me a story about you shitting your pants, which I'm pretty sure everybody <laughs> shut shut their pants at some point. But everyone. The yeah. point is. We've got a lot of really, really good guests already lined up, like just flight patterns full. Like we've got good people from a ranch community, farm community, professional app, a lot of the same kind of stuff that, that, that you guys have pioneered for, for our community, but just a different, it's going to be a different reality. I want failure. I want to talk about people's, the jobs they didn't like. I want to talk about when they wanted to quit. You know, I don't want it to get super dark where people have talked, thought about suicide and weird shit like that. But I want to talk about the shit that nobody wants to talk about. And it's shit that people should talk about because it's it's real and everybody's mm. fake as fuck. <laughs> and not everybody, but man, social media is just it's a shitty medium. Yeah, it's Instagram culture. It's, it's it, it, 
All you Dan, see, you and I have had this conversation. Yeah, you just see the finished product. You don't see the fucking hot dog making process. Yeah. But now you are a little bit. With yeah. the quarantine, you're seeing a lot more girls without their nails and their Botox and their fucking eyelashes. And you're like, oh, now I can tell who's pretty and who's not. <laughs> no yeah, offense. And this, you know, that's, that's a good, there. totally different topic. But somebody suggested TikTok to me. And I'm like, I'm not getting fucking TikTok. Like, I don't have an, I, enough hours in the day to, to get another app on my phone. Me neither. That's I'm with people you. doing stupid shit in their house. So finally, somebody convinced me to get TikTok. And I put it on my phone. And it was like 2.30 in the morning. I had a fire going. It was snowing outside. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to check out TikTok. I sat and cried laughing for probably three and a half hours straight. No water, no piss breaks, no nothing, just thumbing through. It, it's actually pretty funny to really? watch people in their <laughs> homes just being real. Like, again, I know it's a lot of stage dances and stuff, but you're seeing people expose themselves and be super vulnerable in their kitchen, in their own kitchen, in their own home. And it's pretty refreshing because it's not your standard bullshit man my life is so great even though i know your life is not great because i know you and you're a piece of shit and you <laughs> have suicidal thoughts and you're broke half the time and your marriage is shit like you know when i see that shit on instagram and people post that stuff and i'm like dude i know you you go home and drink your fucking troubles away yeah. every fucking night and fight with your fucking wife like <laughs> you're a fucking piece of shit liar like don't be that guy don't be a shit bag but i want to start talking to people in a real manner on the podcast and for me i'm not trashing anybody in the veteran community i refuse to do it but man it's super fucking played out i said it in my post i hate the fucking word motivation like if you got to listen to a fucking podcast by a guy that volunteered to be in a fucking service telling you to fucking wake up early in the morning and not be a shit bag, then you don't need to be fucking motivated, man. You need to fucking just <laughs> disappear. Like <laughs> I wake up at noon. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm super, I'm super over it. Bert, I know I, I'm on a rain I wake, here, but... I wake up at noon and I, every, every day at noon, I send Jocko an email. I'm like, huh. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I slept way, for six hours, bro. He's the, not, he's the guy, though. He's the one that wants everybody awake at 4.30. He can wake up at 4.30 all he wants. I've honestly never listened to one of his podcasts, so I'm not, I've never met him. I don't know him. But just this overarching theme of, like, get up and be the best person you can be. Yeah. Man, like, how about get up and let's take one of your fucking problems. Are you a drunk? Are you a drug addict? Do you have to smoke weed to go to bed? Do you take fucking 10 CBD pills to go to sleep? Let's start with that, not getting up and fucking doing push-ups and mm -hmm. fucking, you, you know, fighting mm -hmm. the world. Like, let's start with a fucking problem. And well, I want to get people on the show. Uh, that's not really a problem, that, Bert, to be smoking weed all day. I'm doing great. <laughs> no, <laughs> stop you know, some, but stop you talking handle. shit about He's just like describing my life. Like, <laughs> here's what a piece of shit looks like. And he just goes down my itinerary for the Dan day. Dan Holloway. Oh, you are. Like, I am yeah. listening you out because you are a piece of shit. No, but for real, Dan, you can handle that. Yeah. Because you're, you, you, you're one, you're, you're, your IQ is off the fucking charts. So you can process that. Like, even when you're high, you can process that. Somebody like me, if I smoke marijuana and, you know, talking about a shit your pants story, like I tried marijuana in the last couple of years to sleep better. And for me, this is not a fucking joke. It's cold where I live. I live in a cabin up in the mountains at 18 feet of snow. And I got into this rhythm where I was trying to help myself sleep better. Mm -hmm. But I got into a position where I walked into my bathroom and I saw the toilet seat and I'm like, fuck, it's going to be cold. I have a space heater in there. I didn't have it turned on. So I sat down with my fucking jeans on the toilet seat, super high, trying to figure out, okay, I can warm the toilet seat up. Well, guess what I did? I forgot what I was doing, and I just shit. I realized I was wearing my pants. Uh, that is not a joke. That's like, fucking great. Like, I literally forgot what I was, where I was at. I didn't forget where I was at, but I forgot that I had forgot to pull my pants down. And I sat down on the toilet to warm it up with my jeans on, and I literally filled my jeans with poop. And it wasn't a, it wasn't a hacky sack at a fish concert poop either. It was like, it was like a cow apple poop. milkshake. Like, yeah, yeah. Just... Luckily, the shower was right next to me, and I was able to walk over and just. Yeah, I can take a shit, clean it off. So, so, so I'm not geared for that. Is what I'm saying. I will never use drugs again in my life. I will never do alcohol again in my life. I, it just doesn't work for me. Like my brain and my body. Some people can handle that. 
So, but I want to get people on the show that can't handle that stuff or have had periods like that. And I know a lot of friends that are super successful now that went through a super dark time in their life. You guys probably have. You oh, know? yeah. Everybody, everybody, everybody has. has You're lying if you haven't. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I mean, yeah. I, I, I enjoy a bit of the darkness, though, to be if I'm being completely honest. Like, there's part of me that doesn't want to let go of some of the stuff that I know is not necessarily good for me because I enjoy it. It's like a vice. It's like a vice to sit around and think about fucking people up all day. You know what I mean? Like, you try, you try to get over that. Like, you can't be a fucking door kicker your whole life, obviously. So you have to process no. that shit and move on to something else. Not just, like, the actions that you go through on a day-to-day basis, but also your mindset. Like, you can't be walking around primed to fuck somebody up all the time. You know what I mean? But no, you can't. It's but nice the to other feel one, like that I, sometimes because that's the best that a lot of us were at anything in our lives. And that's a very competitive field. And if you lose, you die. You know what I mean? So it's pretty interesting how it works for, for different people to me. Yeah, it is. And, you know, it's such a weird time. And I think it's going to get even worse with the military slowing down. Like, And it's going to slow down. The wars are going to go. These two wars at some point are going to completely disappear. You know, at some point they all do. But, you know, talking about the dark side of people's lives when they wake up and they don't want to continue on. And I want to get people on to talk about that stuff. But then there's a whole nother part of this that you guys know I've always been fascinated with is jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, it fascinates me when you hear about a super well-to-do, self-made musician, actor, business person and you find out what the first 10 years of their life was like and it was you know like jt is the perfect example like working at mcdonald's you know ross you've talked about that stuff to me is so intriguing to me like how did this start yeah i worked at at a roller rink yeah i was a skate referee at a roller rink i've I've, you know worked at all could you skate backwards yes yeah could you do it now Uh, yes um, but only in roller skates i've never (laughs) done roller blades why don't we make another? Can you shoot the duck? Shoot the duck? Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I can shoot the duck. What's, <laughs> what is shoot the duck? I've they never... call it a pistol. Crossfitters call it a pistol squat now, but it was actually invented by the roller skating. The community. one where you're, it's called you're shoot, squatted and your it's legs called shooting the duck. Yeah, 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 your legs straight yeah. out. Um, <clears throat> well, that's cute. Yeah, no, but uh, I'm super fascinated by that as well um, because. You're right. No one wants to talk about failure on Instagram or otherwise in real life where it's like, hey, man, you read all these positive posts every single morning and I'm the same fucking way as you where I look at some of these people who I know personally and I'm like, your yeah. life is not Dude, awesome. Your life is fucked up. All everything you You're write, shit. these paragraph fucking novels, these, you know, it's like the, the first chapter of the great Gatsby on there where you're just like, dude, your life is not great at all. Like you're a horrible human, but you're telling everybody else how to live their life. You're like, you're full of shit. You're full of shit. Yeah, and we all know these people. And, and it, it'll catch up to them. It always does. Like it always does. Like you can't, you can only run from that shit and hide from it and cover it up so much. But you know, t- that's fascinates me. Just, I want to talk about people's, I want to talk about real shit. Like, and I don't, and I want to have guests on here that for me, I'm at a point in my life for the first time in 44 years. If you don't like me, fuck you. I don't <laughs> care. I'm not going to break the law. I'm not going to be a child molester, a rapist, a bank robber. I'm not going to do anything illegal. If you don't like me for who I am, fuck you. I don't need you in my fucking life. See ya. <laughs> and I want to get, you know, that's the, that's the message I want that it's the message is, And Dan, you and I have talked about this yep. a lot. Be yourself, man. Just be yourself. If people don't, the right people will like you for who you are. And I don't want to talk about motivational shit because, again, if somebody needs to be motivated, they're not worth motivating. You have to do this stuff on your own. you got to stop depending. Yeah. And I, without getting into politics, it cracks me up when I see people walking around with a Trump hat. If you've turned your identity so much into wearing a politician's name on your head 24 hours a day <laughs> walking around town, man, like hit the fucking pause button. <laughs> And find a hobby or something else to do because you've lost. Like, you've lost. Like, you've lost. I like to uh, troll people with Trump gear sometimes. It's pretty funny. Well, have you have you seen that Larry David Curb Your Enthusiasm episode? I know we're getting on a rabbit hole. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Trump retweeted it, by this the way. This whole show is a rabbit hole. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But that one's hilarious where he's in L.A. and everybody hates Trump so much that he starts wearing a hat and then people like leave meetings with him and he's all by himself. He gets seats at bars because mm-hmm. people will move like restaurants. People will move away from him. Classic. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. <clears throat> that red hat's got but some yeah, gravity just, to it. <clears throat> I just want this thing to be a focus on, you know, that. And then I want to do a lot of history stuff. One of the things we're going to do that and Ross and Dan, I've talked to you guys about it, but, you know, we're not just going to have a logger on the show. Buster and Tyler and myself and you guys or whoever else will bring other people on there mm-hmm. that are internet personalities or or fun or celebrities that are good people. We're going to go work with this like next month. I'm, I'm going to go up on one of our first episodes. You know, we're going to go spend three days working on a lot, working with a, a six generation logging family in Oregon. And this isn't going to be like, you know, whatever that log show was on on history. Yeah. I think, I think it was simple. called when we go jammers. to these places yeah. and do these jobs and right? film it for so. the podcast. It's going to be simple. They're going to treat us like we're day one new guys making 10 bucks an hour. So if I get in a $750,000 logging machine on the side of a mountain and I start to fuck it up, I'm going to get yelled at or somebody's going to say, and they already told me, they're like, we're not going to cut you a break. You know, you have to do this task and this time or we start losing money. So you're going to have somebody riding your ass that's probably 85 years old that's been logging since they were 10 saying, hey, man, you're costing me fucking money. Speed it the fuck up. You have to learn this faster because that's how America was built. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. Speaking of which, we had uh, a friend of yours on the show last night, the millennial farmer. Um, Zach, man. That guy was fucking awesome, dude. There's a couple other guys you guys have to have on. Zach is genuinely one of the best guys you'll ever meet. And these guys work their asses off. I mean, they just work and work. And I don't need to tell you guys or anybody watching this, but being a rancher and a farmer in 2020 is not fucking easy. No, we, we, a, we had know, him on last night and he was, it was mind altering what he was, you know, telling us his, his day to day was like in what, how he's affected by the COVID. It was things that I had never thought of, you know, as far as like ethanol, like, cause he does corn and stuff like that. Yeah. As far as like ethanol for uh, for gasoline and then uh, feed just for cattle, and he's like, "Look, man, if these cattle can't get sold and they get slaughtered, then they're not eating corn." And yeah, all, all the stuff. second and like, third order effects from that shit uh, was crazy. I mean, man. it makes sense when you hear it, but it's hard to conceptualize when you're not really in that lifestyle. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. You just, you just think. No, I, I had I had another buddy of mine, and he's a super private guy. I'm not going to mention his name, but he's a hog. His family's like fourth generation hog farmers. And they literally had to stack a thousand bodies. Like they had to kill a thousand hogs that are just sitting in a pile mm-hmm. on their property that they have to use front loaders to bury and put in a big pit or to haul them off to be rendered. Yeah. Because they get to an age where they, you know, it becomes too much to take care of them. And they hit that, you know, they hit a prime spot. And by the way, bison are the same way. Now the fact the, the processing plants for bison are saying, Hey, your bison can't be overweight or you get penalized. It can't be underweight. So you've got this mm. window to feed out your bison and it's bison, cattle, hogs, you name it. And if you miss that window, man, you're sitting on an animal that's just going to cost you money. Yeah. You know, you don't want to breed that bull or it's a, not a good heifer, but it's, you know, these, a buddy of mine, he literally, they had to, almost a thousand hogs that they had to kill and put, uh, put in a big pile, man. Uh, speaking of bison, by the way, we got some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on in the air. Bison Union is not one of them. However, we mm-hmm. wear your gear all the time. We're gigantic fans of your company uh, at Bison Union. I think, shit, we're both wearing hats today. Uh, I'm we come in to work at different times, and yeah. this isn't planned. Both of us just happen to be wearing Bison Union shit. I wear I feel this like we're hat always every day. wearing it. I know. I wore so the, the last hat I had that was like this, but it had. Just a regular American flag on it, I think. I don't remember what it looked like. Yeah. But I wore that one for fucking eight years. We yeah. wear the clothing from Bison Union all the time, the hats. Uh, I have not gotten a pair of boots yet. Um, that is he mentioned this. Anybody, the, anybody guys, that man, comes you're, you're, on the show, you bro. You, you guys, you, you know that you don't have to plug our stuff. Like, I'm, I'm not here Whatever, to sell bitch. shit. I'm just not. But, you know, but I appreciate it. You guys in the DB community, you know, the Drinking Bros 20 code is, is on there. You guys can use it, but I can't thank you enough. And the boots are coming. The boots, our boots are handmade in Mercedes, Texas by, by uh, a company down there. So your boots are being made. We just, every time we launched it, we took them off the site 
because we didn't want to get in the boot business. But every time we do a run of these boots and put them on the site, they sell out in like an hour. Yeah. And they're five hundred and fifty dollars, which we make hardly any money on them because they're custom, handmade bison leather boots, you know, and and they're made specifically for us. But I will have a pair of boots for you, but. Because I've bought them off your site numerous times, and then it just says, we'll notify you when they're ready. And I was like, motherfucker. Um, But that's how great your company is. Like, you genuinely make the coolest shit for dudes on the planet, in my opinion. Um, And we wear it all the time. Again, not a sponsor, no nothing. You're just a buddy of ours. But you have the best fucking clothing line there is for dudes. Like... Where it's well, just comfortable, it's about, cool shit. It's about to get a lot better. I can't I can't say anything now, but we just partnered with one of the biggest clothing companies out there um, that makes real shit for real men and women. It's Gap. And it's that's, Gap. that's kind of developing. But, Ross, I just want to pick, go back for a second here. Right now, I probably get between 20 and 30 comments or messages a day saying, <laughs> Hey, you piece of shit! Get Ross's boots. So <laughs> yes. thank you for that. That's yes. because like I, that's I because everybody it. that comes on the show that knows you, he says something about it to them. Yep. So AJ Buckley, <laughs> uh, Tyler, Tyler Gray, and AJ, then, and AJ's then, got a pair of the boots. I know he was the, talking. He about, was yeah. talking about. Yeah. So AJ, uh, like he didn't know, and he just kept talking about how amazing these boots were, and I was like. Are they? And I just, I kept gassing them up and let them go and go and go. And I was like, man, I, those sound like the best boots maybe ever made. I was like, I wouldn't know. I don't have a pair. I've tried to buy them numerous times. And AJ was like, oh, God, the craftsmanship of these fucking boots are amazing. And I was like, Jesus Christ, did you talk to Bert? Did you know that I didn't get the boots? And he goes, no, man, I just love these boots. And I was like, I bet you do, AJ, you fucking son of a bitch. Uh, I got to watch that. I got I to gotta watch and listen to that episode. He was he great. Is, yeah, he's the best. He is everything that's right with everything right now. Like, that guy is just and crazy Tyler. shit in all the right ways. And Tyler. he's just awesome. He's I- Dude, so we had Tyler Gray on, you know, uh, last week, yeah. a few days ago. Um, I watched uh, SEAL Team last night, and I did not know that Tyler is a fucking producer on the show, too. He's a producer, and he directed an episode this last season, and he'll probably direct some more. Which yeah, is, man. I, I, I was out there, you know, watching him work, and, you know, again, there's going to be people that watch this. Everybody always makes a comparison. Well, why don't people pay so much attention to veterans? Why are athletes and celebrities get so much attention it's like you can't fucking compare the two so i'm not saying that but when you watch an actor actor or actress that is good at their craft Mm -hmm. it is fucking a lot of work like i realized that working on this last movie uh violence of action with chris pine and, and ben foster that's coming out here this year um Watching and being on a set, and Ross, you've been around it half your life. Yeah. Like you get it, but man, it is not easy work. And it's they, like they just don't show up and they're on, and everything works perfectly. I, you know, I had to explain to people like Chris Pine doing his movie and Ben Foster. You shoot one scene, like we're talking right now to each other. You don't just shoot it once, and they have some magic <clears throat> editing equipment that yeah, does right, right. every you angle. You shoot the same you goddamn shoot thing. It from fifteen <laughs> different angles. Same scene. And you yeah. have to say the same thing over again with the same. Like again, most motherfuckers can't pick up their iPhone and talk for thirty seconds in a selfie mode without fucking it up one uh, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it just, it's just incredible to me. Yep. I'm super impressed in the last year, and I used to be one of those people. Why the fuck do these guys make so much money? Because people like watching them. Yeah. But when you see him work, I'm super impressed by the acting community. Yeah, is there some loudmouth shitbags out there that are, are actors that voice their opinion about shit that they shouldn't because they know nothing about it? Yeah, but actors in general, <laughs> I'm a huge fucking fan, and it is not easy work. I couldn't do it on my best fucking day. And the stuff Tyler's doing now, producing, directing, man, like working with camera guys, doing – doing everything it's just working with everybody on the crew and moving an entire city from place to place in an hour and getting the permits and dealing with the city and dealing with people it's just i mean it's chaotic to me how fast it happens and how well it works yeah and uh you know the the permits is something that no one knows at all and like just dealing with look la is a shithole anyways Mm -hmm. imagine dealing with the people who deal with city permits all they want their fucking handout for eighteen hundred dollars so that one scene You'll probably have five or six different permits that are eighteen hundred a piece, and usually some fucking old goddamn retired fireman who's ninety years old, who's your fire guy, 
in case, God forbid, the set burns down like he's going to stop anything. He's already got one yeah. foot in the grave. You're paying that motherfucker 3600 a day. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole goddamn thing. But uh, I want to get to violence of action right after the sponsors. Is, uh, I'm real curious about it. Um, I know you were you were spent a lot of time on that that film, and uh, I want to chat with you about it. Uh, but uh, Drinking Bros is the promo code for Bison Union for 20% off. Um, and uh, best clothing line in the biz, we all use it. Uh, next up is GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Everything is 25% off. They're doing this for all of quarantine. If you're stuck inside... In some of the states like California uh, and New York, you're going to be stuck inside for a very long time, Um, most likely through the end of May. uh, Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is there for you. Um, 25% off everything. And as always, they have the 36 month page to go program. No interest. So if you're out there, you can apply the 25% to the 36 month page to go program. No interest and knocks a new mattress down to like 20 bucks a month. Uh, which is great. So go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today for that. Next up, we got box of awesome.com. This is one of my faves. It's <clears throat> just a bunch of cool shit that shows up to your house once yeah. a month. Uh, if you're a, a guy out there or a girl, take a little five question survey. They determine what kind of man you are in this life and they send you things accordingly. It's almost like a, like a prophylaxis for serial online shoppers. Yeah. Like, you just set it and forget it. You know what I mean? It's the best. And then stuff just shows up, but you don't, like... Because I feel like if I'm getting stuff in the mail, I'm fine. But if I'm not, I'm like, I got to go order some fucking some, some t- uh, tennis shoe laces yeah. on, on the internet now. You just want Need something at your door, yeah. let alone something cool that's a surprise. Yeah. We've gotten whiskey decanters. Yeah. We've gotten axes, hatchets. We've gotten uh, travel bags. We've gotten dop kits. <laughs> Uh, fucking a whole entire bar sets. Um, mm-hmm. It's only 45 bucks. Go to boxofawesome.com. It's like shopping at Brookstone fucking once a month, but you don't know what it is. Yeah. Something awesome just shows up. Go to boxofawesome.com. Promo code drinking bros gets 20% off. It's, it's like 45 bucks for the month. Your wife orders that bullshit makeup mm-hmm. uh, to her house for a dude. Order this dude. You'll be amped about it every single goddamn month. We are. Um, and then Felix Gray mm-hmm. Is it by Felix Gray? No, it's Felix Gray Glasses.com. Is it really? Mm-hmm. Forward slash drinking bros. Mm-hmm. Felix Gray Glasses.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, free shipping overnight. Um, everybody's spending all their goddamn life in front of computers, and uh, the blue light is killing you, man. Uh, get it out of your life. Uh, go to Felix Gray Glasses.com. And uh, forward slash drinker bros. Get yourself a pair of glasses. Free overnight shipping. 11 hours a day, dude. Boom. They're right in front of Dan's desk. Everybody always steals those goddamn things every time they mm-hmm. come. Uh, and I get it. Nobody else is, is doing it. They don't have the patent for it. Violence of action, Burt Koontz. Um, this was a yes, movie sir. that uh, was <laughs> top secret for a long time. Um, you couldn't even tell us uh, who you were yeah, working with so, or mo- what movie it was. Yeah, and the the... the the production company that did the film man phenomenal. I just had an absolutely awesome experience working for them. They found me oddly enough through a Marine that I worked with 10 years ago, 12 years ago. No shit. They, you know, they, they started, he does, Matt does all of the liaison work. He and I live near each other in, in Okinawa and became friends, but he does all the liaison work for them for the Marine Corps, if they do a movie or anything on a Marine Corps base or use Marine stuff and need to get authorization, he's, he's kind of the guy. Um, Tyler's worked with him a few times. So they called me out of the blue, but it's, it's Thunder Road Productions, which did Sicario, John Wick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're massive. Um, they're, they're just great. And they've only got seven people working there, which is phenomenal. Like it's, they just, that's how they run. They're a small production company that hires a lot of people out. Um, but the movie is Violence of Action. And, and I, I, I don't want to get too far into it. Uh, what the actual movie, you know, the plot or how mm-hmm. it goes. But the two main actors are Ben Foster. Um, and Ben's one of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. He just, he's everything that's right. I keep saying that, but he's another person. You know, Ben and I still text once a week, just, hey, hi, how are you? What's going on? We bullshit. We joke like I joke with you guys when we text. But Ben's been in a bunch of stuff. Hostiles, 310 to Yuma. He played Charlie Fantastic Prince, actor. the bad guy. He's going to win an Oscar one day, I think. I mean, he was in uh, so, Lone Survivor, too. Played yeah, that, played yeah his, 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 uh, his next movie that's coming out, I think it'll come out right after Violence of Action. I'm calling it now, Ross. Mm-hmm. He will get an Academy Award for, and I think the movie will probably win the Academy Award as well. What's the he name of He will get that? a Best Actor. 
Um, ben Foster. Yeah, Ben Foster plays a boxer that was a boxer, Harry Haft. just a good fighter, Harry Haft. Yeah. Uh, um, he played a box. He was in a, a Nazi camp as a prisoner. And what the Nazi guards would do is they would take, they would pick guys that could fight and they would kind of bring him in as, and say, Hey, this is my guy. And instead of sending him in the gas chamber or executing them or torturing them, they had this underground boxing thing going and he became very good and beat everybody. And then once they were liberated, he became a professional boxer, but the way Ben did it, I won't go into how they shot it, but Ben lost 65 pounds for this movie oh, wow. in a matter of like 75 days. They shot it pretty fast, Whew. but it, he, he showed me a little bit of it. I got to see a little bit of it and it is going to be absolutely one of the best I think he's going to win an Academy Award, and I think the movie is just from the five minutes I've seen of it. But Ben was in the movie. Uh, the main yeah, character I'm, I'm looking. Is, by, by the way, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Um, I'm looking yeah. at that movie you were talking about. Big boy cast in that. You got uh, John Leguizamo, Danny DeVito, Ben D- Foster, DeVito. Uh, Peter Sarsgaard is in that movie. Peter Sarsgaard is one of the fucking best, mm-hmm. dude. Uh, God damn it, he's a great actor. Garden State. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Boy, he's great in everything though. Jarhead. Mm-hmm. Um, you yeah, mean- it'll get it'll get nominated, and there's no doubt in my mind that this Ben will get nominated. Um, but just a phenomenal guy. He showed up from day one, and he and I went to the range and shot a lot, and he just soaked it in. Like no ego. Listen to me, and and I'm a, I'm a nobody again. I've been out of special forces for a while. I'm not an instructor. I still shoot a lot quietly. You know, I stay honed on my skills, but medical and shooting, but. Those guys, the other one is is Chris Pine. Yep. And I didn't know much about Chris Pine other than Star Trek and some of the movies he'd been. His dad, Robert Pine, was the police sergeant in Chips mm-hmm. that's in almost every episode of Chips and says, hey, guys, here's your mission for the day. Mm-hmm. Stand on a podium. But He was also in Parks met, and Rec. He played a cult leader in Parks and Rec. Yes, yeah, yeah. he did. He absolutely did. <laughs> By the uh, way. But my first interaction, you go through this process to do these movies, and people from the production company called me. And they're like, uh, you know, they feel you out. They call you and talk to you a few times. And then a month goes by. I don't ever get excited about this stuff because you don't know how long it's going to take Hollywood and, and television. You know, Ross, it, especially you know, now. Yeah. Overnight. And, and now during the pandemic, because, you know, you can't go to work. Everybody's social distancing. Hollywood is shut down. So, yeah, a, a lot of these and, movies are being pushed to the following year. But, yes, you're right. Yeah. And they, you know, they said, hey, we're going to set you up with a phone call with uh, with Chris so Chris and I were supposed to have like a 15 minute phone call and we talked for about three hours and he had already done so, cause he's such a professional. <clears throat> He'd already done so much stuff. And when I first met Chris and we went to the range, I went out to LA and we went and shot for a day and that was kind of me, him feeling me out, me feeling him out. He liked me and you know, I liked him more importantly, he liked me cause that's how it works. Yep. Those guys want to be with somebody who's comfortable and then they say, okay, this is my guy. So, and we went and shot and Chris was straightforward and honest with me and said, Hey man, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I didn't own guns growing up. I grew up in this area and my dad was, you know, like he just said, I'm not a gun guy. I said, you own a gun. Are you ever going to own a gun? And he was just, he wasn't against guns, but he just said, Hey, I'm not a gun guy. So teaching him, but in a matter of time, and you'll see in the movie, this fucking guy is what I was talking about it got to the point where we would be in between scenes in Romania and 25 degree weather in the middle of the night. And Chris is one of those guys. There's 400 people on set working. He would slide in and he's so nonchalant and has no fucking ego that he would like slide in right next to the director, Tarek, who's a phenomenal guy. And, and he would be standing there and they'd go, okay, we're ready to shoot. Does anybody know where Chris is? And he's like, I'm right here. You know, he's just, he would thank the whole crew every day. And he would, he was so kind. But where I was going with that is I would turn around and he would be over there dry firing and doing tack mag reloads. And he got so fucking good at it. He's shooting cross hand. He's, he's offhand. I mean, literally got so good at it in such a short amount of time and watching that transition. And Ben was the same way watching these guys, somebody who's not a gun guy has never owned guns by the end of the movie. This guy was working guns and working malfunctions and shooting just as good as anybody I've ever seen. And I'm not joking. I'm not comparing him to a soldier. I'm not comparing him to a real Green Beret. He's an actor. Mm -hmm. But that's how good he is as an actor that he just soaked it up. And he would look at me and he would just smile. And I said, are you going to buy a gun now? And he's like, 
probably not, but man, I can see why this is so, <laughs> why people like it so much. Yeah. Like shooting, not killing people, but just shooting guns mm -hmm. and working guns. He just, anyway, but the movie's really good. They both play Green Berets. Ben Foster plays a former Green Beret that's out doing kind of spook work. And Chris Pine plays a former Green Beret. And that's as far as, or, or, or not a former, but he plays a Green Beret. And that's kind of as far as I'll go into it. Um, I do think <clears throat> I may get beat up a little bit because we talk about, you guys know me. Mm -hmm. We added some stuff and they asked my opinion. I gave it. And there's some stuff in there that's fucking real. It's not all sexy. Not every Green Beret spends every day jumping out of a fucking helicopter and shooting miniguns and fucking doing cool poses and growing awesome beards. Like, there's a lot of shitty stuff that goes on, and Dan knows this every branch in the military, mm -hmm. whether you're in the 82nd or you're in a Tier 1 unit. There's a lot of nonsense that goes on and yep. a lot of policy bullshit and a lot of, hey, how do we fuck these guys over bullshit yeah. or, or people getting thrown under the bus for shit by their command. So there's some things in there that I think people in the movie that are fucking as real as it can get, but I think people are going to watch it, specifically some officers, and they're going to go, oh, man, do they really need to add that in a movie? That's a little bit too close to home. Mm -hmm. But they they asked that. They said, hey, I want this to be real. So, And I didn't, there's no secret tactics. There's no classified information in it. It's all human terrain. It's all human. It's a pretty dark fucking movie. I think you guys are going to like it. It's it's pretty dark. The gunplay in it's awesome. The storyline's awesome. And the acting is really, really, really fucking good. I'm amped to see it, man. And the, the beauty of someone like Chris Pine is because he grew up in the industry, he's used to treating it like a profession mm -hmm. rather than I'm the greatest thing on the fucking face of the planet. So I'm sure he was super easy to work with. Um, oh, what, yeah. And he, he was. And again, perfect example. And I, I, I don't. You know, I'm not throwing Chris under the bus or talking. I, I would say this if he was here, but you know, he just he doesn't take pictures with people, and and I it was great the way he does it. He just he doesn't he doesn't need that. He doesn't want that. He wants people to have a conversation with him, and not ask for a photo and walk away. He will ask you every question about your personal life and a real human human connection, which you just don't see a lot. I, I watched another actor, a pretty big actor asked to get a photo with him he's like man i just let's just talk i don't i just nope not i don't i don't do that and it wasn't because he's too cool for that it's the exact opposite he doesn't want you to have his your your interaction with him being a selfie he wants it to be an actual human to human interaction does he even have social media because I, I i don't he, he i don't does remember not. I was he doesn't gonna have say, social yeah, media yeah. and he's got a fucking flip phone and i he's my hero Ooh, in, in that regard that's my dream is to have he a flip literally phone has again. a fucking flip phone yeah i look and, if we didn't have to promote this show all the time, that's my dream is to have a, a, a razor flip phone and never email or take pictures or do anything you know it'd be great yeah. <laughs> and, and and he's and he's one of those guys if he did have an instagram or a social media twitter He'd have five million followers, oh, and he would, you know, easily. he would, he'd be one of those people that. I mean, he's a good-looking dude. He's a great actor, but he literally doesn't have it. And I, you know, I just it blew me away. And when I was in Romania for two, you know, the month and a half working, and then the other two weeks in Atlanta, I was around it so much that I wasn't on my phone. Right. Like it was, it was almost addicting because you just don't need it. You yeah. Have human interaction, but those two guys, and there's a lot of other. There's a lot of other actors in this that are really, really good. You'll recognize some guys from um, from other shows, um, and you'll recognize folks from other, you know, from other movies. There's a lot of really good actors in this. It's it'll be a good movie. It's called Violence of Action. <laughs> Can't wait to see it, man. Yeah, uh, let's see. Jillian Jacobs is in it. Uh, Eddie Marzen, do mm -hmm. you know who that is? Yeah, yeah. he was in uh, Ray Donovan. Ray Donovan. Yeah. yeah, he plays the boxing gym brother in Ray Donovan. Yeah. Phenomenal. He's a, actor. he's a, he's actually one of the best. Uh, character actor he's like a fucking paul giamatti he just doesn't get the press really well the director of this uh, i believe directed an episode of ray donovan so oh, really? uh, yeah i think he was in that i know he's directed an episode yeah. of westworld and some other things mm -hmm. uh, yeah T tarik, tarik is directed yeah. i think he's directed more episodes of westworld than anybody i could mm -hmm. be wrong yeah. on that's that. a that's gotta he's, be again, a he's a fucking he's just a quiet show. it qu is quiet director can you imagine being a director on westworld bert can you imagine What's that? can you imagine being a director on westworld like just for one episode, like presumably if they do it like every other TV show in history, if you're directing, you're directing at least that whole episode. Mm -hmm. They have like 
90 different goddamn scenes yep. are, are, I mean, like you're, you're directing maybe four or five different major different types of sets yeah. in one thing with different like uh, storylines going on simultaneously. It's fucking crazy. It was, it, it's, it sounds like an absolute nightmare to direct Westworld. The other yeah, nightmare that. about that season one, you know, it was a Wild West thing. Yeah. <clears throat> that does not exist in L.A., so there's, like, a couple ranches. Um, but you can see, like, the mountains and shit yeah. um, in the background. So yeah. you have to shoot everything from in, like, 20 or 30 yeah. yards. It, yeah. It's the it's the fucking worst. Well, they built, they built a bunch of fucking uh, – they built a bunch of houses and shit out there. Or not houses, but, like, old-school mm-hmm. buildings, and they just left them. Yeah. And people sneak out there and shoot – like, uh, Brandon Rogers sneaks out there and shoots stuff on it all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one he did yeah. – that video that he and Georgie Lee did, uh, where uh, they're like, I, I don't, I can't explain it. It's too fucked up to explain. But uh, all of Brandon yeah, Rogers, yeah, they, too yeah, up exactly. To they fucking film that shit there. It's great. Yeah, it's hilarious. We're big fans. Uh, Bert, this is the point in the show. You know it well. We get to the drinking bro of the week. This one was submitted by Matt Wildman from. It looks like Ontario. O N. O N is Ontario. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, I don't, I, don't, I don't think we've ever gotten one from Ontario. Um, it says uh, he's been a member for Drinking Bros for one year, and he's nominating CST Heidi Stevenson. Mm-hmm. What is CST? Stevenson? Oh, is she the is she the tr- the uh, yeah, she is. Mountie that got killed? Yeah, she the is. The interdiction Mountie that got killed yeah, a couple weeks and, ago. And yeah. uh, b- so, by the way, like um, we did another broette on her a few weeks ago, and the reason why I, I chose him today is a lot of people have been submitting her. Um, and we're trying to get her story uh, out there more because for whatever reason, you know, and we said this last time, this story got no, zero press whatsoever. Yeah, I know. There was a mass <clears throat> shooting in Canada, and it just got buried in American media for some reason. And uh, Yeah, it was a blip. It was up for about a day, a day and a half, two days max. And a buddy of mine who's a state trooper in Oklahoma, I was talking to because he does a lot of stuff with vehicle interdiction and interdiction teams, mm-hmm. but – He's worked with that team and said she is, you know, all the photos they showed, of course, the media shows photos of her like in her in her full dress, like her formal uniform with a bunch of kids walking around her. She was a badass, like all the stuff I've heard about her. She was legit. She was a badass. She was no joke interdiction. Like she went after bad guys at 100 miles an hour all the time and was just a beast. And they, they put these photos up that make her look. It, they just, man, they did. In my opinion, it wasn't. They needed to tell her story more because, from what I've heard secondhand from people that have worked with her, yep, she was a fucking badass and she was really good at her job. And that's why we brought this one up again today, where um, we've probably had twenty submissions for her personally, and we want to get this story out there a little more because, again, it got buried here in mm-hmm. American media. I mean, shit, that was a, you know, a four-hour Twitter thing for us mm-hmm. and. Uh, a lot of people, what was it, 16 people? Uh, I think it was 22 and 16 locations. Oh, in 16 locations. Yeah. Is what, that's so what he was, was driving around fucking people up. Yeah, man. Um, and for whatever reason, I guess because of the pandemic or who knows, man. Mm-hmm. Didn't fit, the, fit our media's agenda at the time. Uh, the story got no press. But, uh, yes, cheers again to Heidi Stevenson. Um, we, uh, we see all your submissions, and we will always try to read them this one in particular has been submitted by like 20 people mm. and uh yeah man we're, we're doing it again for the second time so cheers to heidi stevenson cheers uh, heidi stevens yeah uh bertrude when is your show getting up and running and what's the name of it do you have a name for it yet so i we do have a name and i'm not going to announce it yet i I'll, I'll i'm obviously gonna be working with you guys on it because you're going to be producing yep producing it um under tetherball and and what you guys do but uh, we do have a name for it, and right now the podcast studio is the build out is 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 happening. I mean, they're putting the hardwood floors in today. They're doing the walls. The the actual studio set where people sit is getting built too. So we're probably ten days away or so, and then we've already got our first couple guests lined up. They're going to be good ones again. We're going to focus on history, Americana, the hard work, the stuff that built this country, but we're also going to focus on failure. You know, that's, you know, how people got where they're at today. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have a name for it that kind of fits that motive. Uh, but, you know, stay tuned. We're not trying to do this as a hype thing or spend like, no, of I course. don't care if we, of you know, I don't care if we have five fucking listeners. I just don't, I don't want it to be like this piece of shit show, which 
I was about to walk off on two minutes ago because <laughs> I've got other better shit to do than this. That's why we brought up you know, Heidi Stevenson again, brother. You couldn't walk on I her. Oh, I couldn't. I don't need to, <laughs> to worry about some fucking, you know, 34-year-old Domino's Pizza Hut driver that's got a $1,700 <laughs> AK-47 that he shows on the internet every day, you know, liking my shit. So anyway, <laughs> but no, we're we're going to... I think people are going to like it. If they don't like it, I don't give a fuck. Like, again, if we have 10 listeners and we affect people's lives and they like it, that's fine. But I'd say, you know, Dan and I got to work on that and with you, Ross, mm-hmm. as well. But yep. I'm, I'd am i say we're going to shoot for probably May 15th to 20th for our first episode. That'd be great, man. Uh, you're one of those people. And look, everybody knows we're all friends in real life, obviously. But you're one of those people who is so genuine that it's like I'm I'm excited for your show. Um I, I, we love when you're on Drinking Bros, obviously, um, and I can't wait for your own show where it's just you and your thoughts about the world every single day. And uh, we're super excited for it. Uh, thanks for being on the show and not walking out. Uh, for- no, oh. I, 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 and thank you guys again. You guys, I wouldn't have done this if Dan, you know, Dan and I spent some time in LA talking about it. And mm-hmm. I have no intention of copying other people's. Po- I'm not doing a podcast to make money. I'm not doing a podcast. Buster and Tyler are not doing this to make money. We all have jobs. Yeah. You know, we're doing this to just put out some good content and be ourselves and talk to people who might share the same values as us. And with you guys being involved, we wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys in the Drinking Bros community. And I will never forget that. You know, you guys, I had no desire of being on a podcast ever my entire life. So I started doing it with you guys. And man, it's been awesome. It's, I can't say it enough. It's such a great, positive, community most importantly that has a fucking sense of humor and isn't sensitive like right. literally when a db comments i know it's a db on my shit and i say hey fuck you i'm with your mom right now <laughs> and people laugh back you know every now and then you expect somebody to send you a message and say oh man you made a joke about my mom she died three years ago but the dbs they always come back and say Bert, are you my dad? You know, <laughs> it's just, it's a great community, man. There's this I could weird, talk for 10 hours. There's about this it. weird movement right now with some of these assholes. Uh, it was, they wanted me to adopt all of them for a while, and yeah. now they want me to shave my beard. I'm not doing either one of those things. Yeah. Well, it's not going to happen. No, your beard will be there for life. For yeah. life. It would take uh, and some kind of force majeure to, to get me to shave. Like, it, like, I don't know what it would be. Yeah. Uh, Do you tri- shave triplets. everything? Uh, from the neck down, yeah. Yes, we use Manscaped. You do, you're a manscaper. Hey, we have yeah. a fucking product called Manscaped right here. Manscaped is one of our sponsors. It is specifically what is it? Manscaped. Oh, Bert, you got to you got to get it's one the of these. Best. We'll get them to sponsor Manscaped. your show. Manscaped.com. I will. Wait. I will literally go buy one the minute I get off here, and I'll post a photo. Of it. It's the yeah. fucking best. It's so the best. It, it, you just you get a kit. It's Manscaped.com promo code Drinking Bros fifteen percent off. It is simply for your pubes and your balls, mm. and that's it. And they, <clears throat> dude, they've got ball deodorant, and it says, uh, "Your balls will thank you." That is their slogan. Yeah. You won't nick your balls all up and stuff. Really like fucking. It's funny. I'm not worried about. I'm not worried about my balls. The reason I shave it is because I got you know my three inches of cold blue steel. When it's shaved down there, it looks like three and a half inches of cold mm. blue steel. Like. <laughs> It's that's why I shave. It's the optical illusion. You know what you can do is Gon- just get like, Gonzo's nose, if you will. <laughs> just get a ruler tattooed on your dick. Be like, hey, yeah. it says twelve right there at the end, homeboy. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Maybe that's right. Maybe it's your butthole that's fucked up or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Bert, thanks for being here. For Bert Coons, <laughs> Anthony, Anthony Holloway. I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. Bert, do us a favor and walk right off this show. Yeah, get us the fuck out. Later, later, losers.